Hello and welcome to another episode of Tech I Want. My name's Rafi. And I'm Dan. And today we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Rafi, if you, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I would like, I don't know, I guess I would want in invisibility. That's a good superpower. Yeah, but only at night. Ooh, but I have something today, my superpower, that'll be able to catch you even at night. Because what we have today in the studio is Duovox. See through complete darkness <laughs> with Duovox, mate? That's oh, my arch nemesis. <laughs> So it's a special camera that allows you to see at night. It's a night vision camera, right? Yep. Uh, but it's not like the bad quality green grayscale night vision that you're used to seeing in movies and documentaries. This lets you see in full true color. Yes. In bad 2K. quality in full <laughs> color. Not, not just green and white. <laughs> Let's get it out. So this is a Duovox. And I mean, it looks like pretty much any point and shoot from back in the early 2000s, no? Yeah. It's pretty small, it's pretty compact, has a huge screen on the back, no viewfinder, and a huge lens that doesn't retract or expand. This is it. Right. Turned on, turned off, this is what your duo box looks like. It's got a simple form factor. It, it, it's, it's very simplistic, you know, the buttons are fairly limited. But I think that's placed to its advantage. I, I feel like this is the kind of camera where you can just pull it out and start filming or shooting immediately. You'd hope so, and we'll get to we'll get to problems with that later. But it is when you turn it on that you really begin to see its superpower, because we've been testing this out. Even in pitch darkness, you can see pretty much everything, and it's not like a nearby thing either. You know, with phones, you can see in the dark. Like there have been huge leaps in low light. Uh, cameras uh -huh. in recent years but it's still only for scenes that are nearby and lit by street lamps and stuff like that this even down to ten thousandth of a lux which is moonlight overcast at night no lights no street lights no phone lights no torches overcast night you can see with this camera that's crazy dude how does it do that <laughs> <laughs> It does that with an f0.9 lens and AI to put all these different images that it takes together. Right, so, so that aperture is being opened super wide, taking uh -huh. in all the light information and then using whatever's built inside, what, whatever algorithm they have to, to kind of create this, this picture of what's going on. But it does have problems focusing on really nearby objects. Yeah. One of the hopes I had with this was that I could use it as a vlogging camera especially when I go camping or hiking at night, I'd be able to put it up and film myself. But there's no stabilization, so you'd need to use a tripod, have it somewhere. Right. And aside from that, if you stand too close to it, you're both out of the frame, because it's pretty zoomed in, as mm -hmm. it is, and you're not in focus. So you need to stand quite far away. Which is which not case, conducive for vlogging, right? Yeah, exactly. You won't be able to capture the audio. But for capturing things that happen around the campsite at night, is definitely a viable option for me. And for the photographers among you, you're probably thinking f0.9, that's a super fast lens. We'll probably have like, I don't know, two centimeters of uh, focus, depth yeah. of field. But no, this camera can focus between, I don't know, like five meters and a thousand meters. And in the darkness, that thousand meter is still lit up. I mean, just check out this footage, comparing my GoPro and the Duovox. So here I am with the Duovox and the GoPro, and I think the difference is stark. I mean, there's a light here that's shining in my face, but if I bend down a bit, boom, I'm disappeared. I've, I'm sure I've disappeared on the GoPro, but I'm assuming the Duovox is still capturing me in full true color. Look at the detail visible in the building on the right. Look at the church in the background. That's so far away. So you, you so you went out there filming. You filmed uh, filmed at night, and you filmed it, compared it with the GoPro. Yeah, and I mean the GoPro is not known for its low light sensitivity, so maybe it was a kind of unfair test. But even compared to my vision, you know, there were things in the darkness that I couldn't see, but when I brought this camera onto it, all of a sudden I could. 
And that kind of speaks to its many use cases. On its website, they're talking about it being used as a dash cam when you're driving at night. Yeah. There's a mount. You can mount it onto your car so that it records and sees everything as you're driving. Uh, you can use it when you're hiking or camping, you know, if you want to wayfind, especially at night. Obviously, you can do that with a headlamp or a torch, but how far is your torch actually showing you? You know, if you were looking up at a mountain and trying to decide which way I need to go up at night so that I can ski down the next day, this will actually light up the whole mountain. The only thing, so I saw that, yeah, for dash cam, that totally makes sense. I, I get it. You're driving around at night, everything can be recorded. Or you can just watch through here, through the viewfinder or whatever this thing, the LCD screen. The other thing, though, that I saw is that they were promoting it as like almost like a going out at night to capture wildlife, you know, like to, to film wildlife. Uh, go camping, hiking, which which I think is a, a great use for something like this, especially if you're doing it as a family or you're kind of amateurs, you want to just mm -hmm. go out there and just see what it is that's creeping and crawling and making noises at night. Very, very cool. The one thing that I thought could be could stop me from doing that, though, is that I, I don't know uh, if this is waterproof or anything like that. It, it seems it's extremely lightweight, and it seems fairly simplistic. I also wonder if this would be easily broken if I took it out to, to the outdoors, to the great outdoors. So it's not an adventure cam, no, it's not like your GoPro. And maybe when I brought up that comparison, that was pretty unfair. I'd compare it to the GoPro in as much as, you know how people were filming uh, ski videos and rock climbing videos and stuff like that back in the 70s and 80s, that's nothing new. But they were there with helicopters and film crews and really expensive cameras and lots of people. Uh, it was a whole production. Yeah. And GoPro, in this little palm-sized camera, put that power of Hollywood productions in this action camera uh, segment into your hands. Everybody could become a hero. Same thing with night vision. You know, there have been BBC documentaries since like the 70s with David Attenborough going mm -hmm. and filming things at night. They could do that, but they needed big film crews, expensive cameras, lights, uh, lots and lots of money. And all of a sudden, now for 400, 500 bucks, you're getting something, again, like the early GoPro wasn't crazy Hollywood quality, but you did have that action footage. This isn't obviously BBC <laughs> nature documentary quality, but all of a sudden you can see all these things at night. Very cool, man. I think that's a just comparison. Speaking of, I thought this would be great if you wanted to film Blair Witch style movies. You remember, shaky, you remember Blair Witch? Yeah, a little bit yeah, yeah. shaky, dark. Only one, something that's illuminated in the center and everything else is dark around it, like a silhouette around it. Or would Very this be creepy. The, or would I this mean, be the opposite, you know? Like the Blair Witch Project wouldn't have happened if this camera existed, because all of a sudden you can see everything. There's yeah. nobody hiding in the shadows, you know? Like Resident Evil or something like that. That's what I was thinking. As I was walking around, especially with the flashlight thing on, I could see the flashlight in real life, and uh -huh. that's all my vision could see. But when I was using the camera, all of a sudden I could just see everything around me. Nothing scary. I mean, obviously, it looks a bit strange if you're just walking around, like, looking at the world like this. Yeah. But, hey. Well, cool. So you can use the Duo Box to kind of reenact your favorite video game moments and go camping with it and uh, use it as a dash cam for your car to be able to see better at night. So how did you think it wasn't very, that simple to use? Like, I suggested you can just turn this on and start filming, but, but it sounded like you had some, uh, some issues with it. So, I mean, this is still a prototype, and I'm hoping they're working on the interface because it still is a little bit clunky. Uh, like, every now and again, I try to take a picture. Like, I'm clicking this button. It's beeping, but there's nothing actually being recorded. Uh. Am I missing something? Yeah, the card yeah. is full. <laughs> but it didn't say that before, <laughs> did it? I don't know. You know? So there are these little bugs that I think will be ironed out, um, but it's just a little bit inconvenient. And even when the card wasn't full, you know, uh -huh. I'd be trying to film something and we'd run into problems. So the DualVox both films and takes photos. Um, some people will be a little bit unsatisfied with the photos it takes because it only goes up to five megapixels. Uh, so it is really like an early 2000s photo camera. But it does that so that it can capture all of this low light greatness. On the other hand, it films videos up to 2K, which I thought was pretty nuts, comparing the 5 megapixels to the 2K. Yeah. In the darkest of places, when there's no light at all, like say you're going caving, you know, that might be another use case for this. It does come with its own light, so you can turn it on, did that turn on? Yeah. And it's super powerful. Like when I was... 
check that out. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and it's interesting. Like, I filmed this with the GoPro as well. Hopefully, we can link in with that. Oh, yeah. That's one powerful light right there. Even the GoPro can see in the dark now. It's interesting. When you turn it on, the sensor actually kind of co overcompensates for the lightness. So all of a sudden, it's bright. Everything's white. And then it dials it back down so that you get a nicely colored image. Also, for the super dark moments, it has grayscale, which I guess is going back to that old school David Attenborough night vision. Yeah. Okay. It's extracting a little bit more light. And fun fact, did you know your eyes see black and white in the darkness as well? Have you ever noticed that? No. In, so I don't see color at night? Yeah. Oh. At night, I mean, obviously, if there's enough light, you will see color. Yeah. But your eye is made out of rods and cones, like the way you see light. And I think it's the rods see color and the cones see contrast or the other way around. But the rods that see color only work when there's enough light. When there's not enough light, all of a sudden, you're only seeing in black and white, in grayscale. Try that out. Turn off the lights and look around, and you'll see that colors kind of vanish, and you're just seeing in black and white. It's super weird. The Duo Vox is on Kickstarter now. So that was the Duo Vox. I'm Daniel. And I'm still Rafi. And this was Tech I Want. If you liked what we had to say, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, because we'll be coming up with stuff like this every week. Until next time. Bye-bye.